Good morning, and welcome to a very uh, short, abbreviated, but uh, fact-filled episode of The Angry Astronaut. Since my arrival here in Denver, I have found out that there is a lot of ULA presence. I mean, it's something that I always really knew, but when it comes right down to it, the operations here are beyond impressive, and I can't say that I know all the details of everything that's going on at the moment or or everything that's happening there, but I'm going to give you a quick review of the uh, buildings and the tech center, as they call it, in the south side of Denver, and uh, just a you know, quick glance as to some of the things that, uh, that are happening there. Um, and I also want to show you some things. It's amazing the things that you can uh, come across here um, in Denver. For example, uh, these... ULA um, M&Ms. Uh, that was an interesting thing that I uh, stumbled across. And then the, uh, the Lucy ULA patch uh, yeah, um, um, you just just happened to, to find these things. No, I didn't steal them. Um, and uh, the Mars 2020 Perseverance, very cool, very cool indeed. Um, also, we've got this little guy. So it's just uh, they're they're into plushies. They seem to really like uh, plushies in a big way, and and refrigerator magnets too. You got this uh, from the Mars twenty twenty mission refrigerator magnet in in that regard, and then a more general the the these Atlas medallions, and check this out. They put one out. For every mission, I'm sorry I got shaky hands, but uh, that's that's what the kind of stuff that that you can you might be able to stumble across here. Um, this is from Starliner. Starliner, yes, indeed. So, and then you got the same configuration on the back, but but what I find to be the most awesome thing about it uh, it's rocky rocky the rocket um and i think that this is a name that's also included by the fact that we are in the rockies that uh, the local baseball team is called the colorado rockies that sort of stuff so yeah just uh just happened to to come across all this stuff, uh, and uh, it is some really neat, neat swag that I've come across here in the couple hours that are going to be passing before I pay my visit to Sierra Space. But let's get on to the actual ULA facilities once again. I need to emphasize that I wasn't—I'm not there on any kind of official, you know, pretext or anything like that, or official. So therefore, there are no photographs that I took from inside these buildings at all. I didn't violate any of their security restrictions or anything like that. Just give you an idea of the things that are happening um, at ULA. So let's check it out. So if you're headed northbound on I-25 someday, you may notice these brownish, tannish buildings on the right-hand side. They may look quite large, as a matter of fact, and you also might spot the ULA logo, as you might notice it right there on these buildings. There are actually three buildings that ULA has in the Centennial area. One of them is called Galileo, another is called called Einstein, and the third is called Newton. This is Galileo. Now, Galileo is arguably the nerve center of ULA in Denver and perhaps even throughout the entire country. There's a fair amount of operations that go on here. Tori Bruno has his office here, and on top of that, they also have some weather oversight, sort of a mission control that keeps track of weather conditions during their launches. Hey guys, we're just about to go into the ULA Galileo building right now. I'm not going to be able to share anything with you in terms of any visuals from inside because of security reasons, but I am going to be bringing you a lot of exciting details, so let's head on in. 
So yeah, obviously I didn't take this photo, nor did I meet Tori Bruno. However, I guess you'll just have to take my word for it that I looked down this hallway and got to see all of these very cool ULA models, essentially detailing the history of the organization. They also had Atlas V and Vulcan Centaur on display. But as I said, I was not there in any sort of official capacity, so I was very respectful of their security. And as I I said before, they also have sort of a mission control. Now, once again, I took no photographs. I can't even confirm if this particular photograph was taken from inside the Galileo building. But what I do know is that there is that weather control and weather observation mission control that they use to ensure that their launches go off without a hitch. And their launch history is beyond impressive. More impressive, really, than I thought in the past. Not only does the Atlas V have a perfect mission success record, so does the Atlas III, and so does the Atlas II. There were 69 straight successful missions with the Atlas product before the Atlas V was even introduced, so we're talking close to 150 consecutive successful launches for this rocket in its various iterations since 1993, and nobody, not not even SpaceX can say that. And although I firmly believe that companies like Northrop and Boeing have relied exclusively on their lobbyists in Congress in order to be able to get Department of Defense contracts, I really feel that the reason that ULA got 60% of the Department of Defense launches is because of this long history of success, this extremely long relationship that has had zero failures since 1993. That's extremely powerful if you want to make sure that your payload arrives in the correct orbit every single time, whereas Falcon 9 had its most recent failure in 2016. Now, to be fair, Falcon 9 has had a ton of successful launches since then, but they can't say that they've had nonstop success since 1993. Elon Musk was barely in college at that point. And then we move on to the Newton Engineering Building. And once again, I must say thank you to the security personnel at these buildings. They didn't give me access to anything that they weren't supposed to, but at the same time, they did provide me with a little bit of escort into a couple of rooms on the ground floor. And in this particular building, I got to see a break room table that was actually constructed out of a component from an Atlas III rocket. It was quite an amazing thing indeed. Now, one of the reasons that I couldn't get a tour of the ULA facilities is because of the construction going on. The Newton building is currently being abandoned by ULA and their engineering services are being consolidated. And a lot of it is being consolidated into this building, the Einstein. Now, once again, I did not take this photograph. I cannot confirm or deny if this is in the Einstein or the Newton building or anything like that. I don't want to step on any toes here, but that is an RL-10 engine sitting up there, and I have to admit, it was a pretty damn cool thing to see. And even though I have a deep hatred for the Starliner, well, they did a lot of their testing at their facilities for the Starliner, including wind wind tunnel testing, and this is the wind tunnel model that they used in order to accomplish a lot of those tests, and I might have seen this as well. But here's the bottom line. There's a lot of extremely active work going on in Denver, Colorado with ULA. It's not just a bunch of administrative office buildings, even though from the outside, that might what these be what these buildings appear to be. I mean, they don't look like anything special, but I assure you, there's very special things going on here in terms of operation, in terms of engineering, in 
terms of new development, smart engine recovery and reuse. Yes, reusable engines are going to be a reality soon. Nuclear thermal propulsion, also something that's going to be a reality in the near future. And I'm going to be covering all of these details in an upcoming video. So until then, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.